In this video, we will show you how to work with paginated collections. As soon as you're working with collections that contain more than a few hundred records, sometimes even less, pagination is a must have if you want your app to stay fast. You can paginate in the front end or the back end. Generally speaking, the more records you have, the more items you have, the more likely it is that you'll want to paginate in the back end. In this video, we'll show you how to use the WeWeb paginator with front end pagination and custom back end pagination. In Xano, I have a table with a list of tickets that contains 992 records. In WeWeb, I'm calling an endpoint that gets all of these tickets. But you see here, it says page one, 100 items. This is because by default, when you add a collection with a lot of items to WeWeb, we paginate 100 per page. Let's just change it to 25 so we can see what's going on. Now, on the page, I have bound my collection list to my collection, all tickets. So even though I have 992 records in Xano, and even though I fetched all the records from Xano, I don't have any backend filters, but I do have a 25 limit in the front end. So on my page, I only see 25 items. If I want to see more items, I need to add a paginator here and move it to the right. And all I have to do is tell the paginator what collection it needs to paginate. So now if I go to preview mode, I can navigate between pages. There's nothing else I need to do. So this is good when we're working with a collection that has a few hundreds or even a few thousand items. If the data is not too heavy for the user's browser, we don't need to paginate in the back end. We don't need to filter the data in the back end. It's okay to send all of that data to the front end if it's not too heavy. However, it's important that we paginate in the front end because if we try to render all these items on the page, the browser will need to build those items to render them on the page. And that will consume too much energy for the browser and it will slow down, maybe even crash. In this case, it's just a few text elements. So maybe we could get away with a few hundred items on the page, but the more complex your repeated element, the harder it is for your browser or for the user's browser to build hundreds of elements on the page. In the WeWeb editor, we have a safeguard. So if you removed pagination, we would still only display 200 items on the page and it would still be pretty hard for the browser. This is in the WeWeb editor. This is so that the WeWeb ed editor doesn't crash when you remove pagination by mistake. But if you publish the app without the pagination, the 992 items will be on the page and more likely than not crash your user's browser or at least significantly slow it down. So let's set that back to 25. One last thing to keep in mind when working with front-end pagination, make sure to bind your collection list to the entire collection with the metadata. If you bind to the data itself, the paginator element will not have the information it needs to paginate the items in the array. So the paginator element needs the information about the limit, the number of items per page, the total number of items in the collection, and the offset. So what index number it starts on. If we click on two, now we're on page two. And if we go back to our collection 
we see now that the offset is 25 because this first item that is displayed is the 25th item in the array of objects. So this one here. So that's how the WeWeb paginator works with front-end pagination. Now, what if you were working with millions of records and you wanted to paginate data in your backend so that your backend doesn't send millions of records to your front end? Let's see how you could set up a custom pagination on the WeWeb paginator. In our backend, for demonstration purposes, we have two similar endpoints. One that gets all the tickets without pagination. And when we run and debug this, we get an array of items in between brackets. We get all the 992 items. And then we have a similar endpoint where we added pagination. So how we added pagination is very specific to Xano, the backend we're using for this video. But we enabled paging here. We decided we would only send 25 items to our front end. And we set up pagination here. Uh, Xana wanted it to know what page we were on, how many items per page, and what was the offset. So we added those three integer inputs here and mapped them here. Again, this is very specific to Xano. So you need to figure out on your side, depending on the back end you're using, how to enable this. And the big difference is once you run and debug this, endpoint, you get an object in between curly brackets with metadata, with information about the collection of data. So the number of items received here, we're on page 40. So we don't have 25 items. We're at the end of the list. But if we go on page one, if we rerun this, we receive 25 items because we have 25 per page. We're on page one, the next page is two, there's no previous page, the offset is zero. There are 992 items in total in our table. And because we're getting 25 items per page and there are 992 items, that means there's a page total of 40. And then we get an array with our list of items, but instead of getting all 992, we only get 25. So in WeWeb, we'll create a collection that fetches that specific endpoint where tickets are paginated in the back end. To save some time, we set up the endpoint and authorization header. Now, if we click continue without any information as to the page or offset, we will get from our back end the first 25 items so the 25 items for page one. If I look at these results, it starts with 2145. Now, I need a way to navigate and get information from page two. In order to do this, I can add a query string to tell my backend, get me page two. And then I'm on page two and my items are 34, 35, 36. Another way to do this would be to say, I want to start on index 25, because on page one, since I have 25 items per page, I will have had index zero to 24, my first 25 items from my table. So, Instead of asking for page two, I could ask for offset 25. And Xano will return the same information, 34, 35, 36. So we have these two options, offset or page, but of course we want this value to be dynamic, to change depending on where the user is in the collection. Let's give ourselves those two options. Let's create a variable, an object variable called paginator. We will 
have it as an object. And we just want a page by default, it would be one and an offset by default, it will be zero. And we don't need to preserve this on navigation. On our paginator, we'll make sure to enable custom pagination. In order to function, the paginator needs a little bit of information. First, it needs the total number of items we have in our collection. We can get it because our backend sends us this information. So if your backend doesn't send you the number of total items you have in your collection, you need to find a way to get that information. You need to change the API call so that your backend sends you this information. So we have 90, 92 items. And right away, the paginator updated itself because based on the total number of items we just provided and based on the number of items per page that is set by default here, it calculates that it will need 40 pages to display the 992 items we have in our collection. If we change this to 38, it will only need 27 pages. If we change this to nine, it will need 111 pages. Let's move it back to 25. That seems like a nice user experience. And finally, the paginator needs to know on what index of the collection it is. To calculate a dynamic offset, we need to say the current page we're on, so page one minus one times the number of items per page. So in our case, 25. So currently, because we're on page one, the first item to display will be index zero. If we were on page two, it would be two minus one equals one times 25. So it would be an index 25. Now that we have this in place, we can create a workflow on change. So when the user interacts with a paginator, we will update our variable and we will pass it the entire context of the paginator. And finally, we will fetch our collection. So we will make that API call to our backend to get the new information. Now, on our page, we need to bind to the correct collection. So it's no longer the admin all tickets collection, it is the tickets paginated collection. And in fact, it's not even the collection we will bind to, it is the array of items because we will handle the metadata ourselves. Let's get the items here. And we'll also have to make our API call dynamic. So instead of calling offset 25, we will bind it to our paginator variable to the offset value. Now, if we click continue and go to preview mode, we can have a look at our paginator variable. And when we click on the right arrow, we see the paginator variable is updated and the collection refetched. Updated, refreshed. Updated, refreshed. If I go to 40, the right arrow disappears. If I go to one, the left arrow disappears. And whichever number I'm on is highlighted. This will also work if we change our API call. Instead of using the offset, we bind to the page of our paginator. Now on page one, page two, it works the same way. 
the variable is updated and the collection refetched. That's it. That's how you work with paginated collections in WeWeb. If you just have a few hundred or maybe even thousand items, as long as the volume of data is not too big for the browser to handle, if it doesn't slow down your app, then front-end pagination may be enough. However, if you work with the largest set of data, you will probably want to set up back-end pagination. It's important to understand what information your back-end needs to return the correct information. So in our case, we saw that with Xano, we could either tell Xano what page we wanted to return, or we could send the offset, that is the index of the first item we wanted to return. But that may change depending on what backend you're using. So you need to figure out what API call will return the information you need to WeWeb. Then with a the paginator element, you can use the information from the pagination event when triggered on change to customize the API call you make to your backend.